time for dueling meteorologists. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Jason Parker, we're going to let you uh, drive here this morning because this is a good friend of yours and a colleague. Ryan Burchett has done weather in uh, Mason City, in Cedar Rapids, mm -hmm. in the Quad Cities, and then he got smarter than the rest of us and left broadcasting. <laughs> he is now with the Mississippi River Distilling Company along with his brother, and you said four employees. Right. And uh, this is a, a company that, that ships uh, your wares internationally now, isn't it? Right. We figured we knew enough people in television to keep an alcohol manufacturing plant open. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's so, 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 so your, your job not drove you to drink, but drove you to more uh, drink. I'm like, man, I could make money off these suckers yeah. for sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, it, uh, in 2010, the state of Iowa changed a lot. It used to be illegal to taste or buy spirits in, at a distillery in Iowa. Right. And they were opening it up, trying to replicate some of the success that we've had in Iowa with the wineries, um, but we don't necessarily grow grapes here. Um, not anything wrong with Iowa wineries, but we grow a lot of grain, and that's what booze is made out of. So the thought was try to get this up and going and uh, generate some tourism and that kind of thing. And so my brother and I had no experience in this. I was going to say, did you have yeah. an interest at all, or what made you want to start Well, a... we love to drink. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Helps. So that was a start. <laughs> and uh, he was living well, in Texas wanting to move back to Iowa. I said, here's a stupid Ryan idea. What if we opened a distillery? And, and uh, the more we talked about about it this, like this could really be something and next thing you know we're writing a business plan and doing some training and then uh, the law was changing and a local bank was interested and we were too far along for our wives to talk us out of it and so here we are <laughs> nice. so where did you guys first set up shop then we are on the banks of the Mississippi River in Little LeClaire Iowa mm -hmm. which uh, a lot of people haven't heard of unless you're an American Pickers fan right we're about three blocks from where they shoot that show but right outside of Davenport okay. literally on the Mississippi River look out our back window right to the river Wow. Well, yeah, so tell us a little bit about your product. What, what makes it special or stand out from other uh, local brands that we might know about? The big thing is this is Iowa in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Every bit of grain that we use comes from a farmer within 25 miles of our distillery. So we're primarily making corn spirits. That's what uh, most of our stuff is made out of. But um, our Cody Road whiskey, uh, every bottle has a batch and bottle number on it. Mm -hmm. And if you go to our website, you can look up the batch notes for this bottle, and it will tell you that uh, Ryan Clark of LeClaire, Iowa, grew the corn, and that uh, oh, really? uh, Tracy Doonan from Reynolds, Illinois, grew the wheat and barley, and the day we mashed it and the day we distilled it, and what equipment I blew up on that batch and the whole story <laughs> it goes behind each, each batch but what we're trying to do is showcase that this is the real deal it is truly made here in your backyard um, supporting farmers right here in uh, rural Iowa so and you're not really buying a bottle of booze you're buying a story absolutely and uh, the best part is that we grow the finest grains in the world right here in our backyard so there's mm -hmm. no reason that uh, we shouldn't have a bunch of these around the countryside in Iowa you know farmers um, could be having their own distilleries right on their own farms if they wanted to. You and know. they have in the past. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Um, uh, America was so rich in small producers back before Prohibition, and Prohibition just really killed that because only the largest producers made it through that mm -hmm. was still something to show on the other side. And it's taken since 1930s to get this back and finally start peeling back some of the laws and regulations uh, from Prohibition that really kept people from doing this kind Beside of thing. Beside the laws, what was one of the biggest hurdles that you got? Well, um, the big thing with starting any small business is uh, just the money that it takes to get going. And the really unique thing about making whiskey is uh, instead of a brewery where we could make beer and put it in a bottle and sell it, uh, we're making whiskey that has to go into a barrel down to the basement and let the sun come up uh, you know, for a couple years and then put it in a bottle and sell it. So that's created some interesting uh, dynamics. But uh, we, um, we run three businesses. We run a manufacturing business that makes booze. We run a distribution business that sells into the wholesale market um, in 26 states and three foreign countries now. Really? And uh, we do a retail business. You can come, take a tour of our distillery, and then get a sample and hopefully take one of these bottles home with you. So now you can get a sample. In the past, you couldn't. And that regulation is left over from Prohibition, isn't that it? That was, yeah. And that repealed in 2010 allowed us to give uh, two ounces of free samples per person per day. And we can sell you up to two bottles per person per day. And we're active in the legislature right now, this session, trying to get some of those regulations peeled back even a little bit farther. All right. You said you mentioned all the different states you're selling to. Where around here in particular can you can you purchase this product? All states surrounding uh, Iowa, but certainly Iowa is our biggest market, and uh, hy has been a strong supporter, um, Ingersoll Wine and Spirits, uh, Central City here in Des Moines. Um, you're going to find us uh, hopefully on most
most, at least a few of our spirits on most shelves around. All right, if I'm going to go find your spirits on the mm -hmm. shelf, where am I going to find this vodka, for example? Which ones will it be next to price point wise? Um, that one's going to be about 20 bucks on the shelf. So, uh, All right, so it's a, a low price point, too. Yeah, it's, uh, we're trying, uh, the vodka game is uh, you got to fight for every every bit of interest. So that's where that one lives. Uh, the whiskeys, uh, our bourbon and rye whiskey, Cody Road, are going to be in the mid to low 30s. Okay. So in bourbon and rye, what's the difference there? Uh, bourbon is a corn whiskey. Okay. Um, predominantly corn has to be at least 51% corn. Most bourbons are 70 to 80% corn, and rye has to be predominantly rye. Our rye is 100% rye, um, and our bourbon is uh, made with corn, wheat, and barley. Where do you get the rye from? Uh, there's interestingly a farmer right up the river from us that grows rye as a he's got a bunch of sandy river bottom soil and uh, it doesn't grow corn very well but it grows rye grass really well oh. and he grows it as a cover crop and sells it to some potato farmers in northwest Illinois that are growing potatoes for a potato chip factory near Rockford I mean all these things come <laughs> Everything together works yeah. together didn't absolutely it? yeah, yeah so. it, by using the local corn grain uh, and those ingredients does it make the flavor smooth or what what can you tell us a little bit about the flavor well the great thing is that we have are able to have our fingers in every bit of the process from where it's grown all the way to the very end. And what we found is, uh, I mean, from a flavor standpoint, I don't know that you'd, you'd notice a huge difference, but um, that story resonates with consumers mm -hmm. all around the world. No question about it. And the gin, uh, uh, gin has some sort of a... Juniper berry. Juniper, okay. Yeah. We back off the juniper a little bit and have a lot of citrus and floral, so it's a great G&T gin, so River Rose. So the legislation would allow you to actually sell, correct? Well, what it would do, two, two things. It would allow us to sell up to 12 bottles per person per day, so you could buy a case. Mm -hmm. And the other thing it would allow us to do is sell a cocktail. Right now, you can't come to the distillery, sit down, and have a drink like you can at a brewery or wine. Right. Right. So we're trying to open that up and really get tourism. Well, board. Ryan, this is awesome. This is yeah. cool that you're uh, you're right here in Iowa. You're using a lot of Iowa grains and a lot of Iowa products to get your product to market, and yep. you're doing well. And hopefully, legislation will nod in your favor. Well, that's what we're hoping. We made it through funnel, so keep your fingers crossed. Well, <laughs> thanks for coming in, man. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back. You're watching Great Day Live on KCW I, Des Moines. Welcome back to Great Day Live in Des Moines. And it's Tuesday, 23rd day of February, our favorite day of the month, Jason Parkin. It is, and it's a, a wonderful day, and, and it's always wonderful when, when I can farm my work out <laughs> and subcontract it. You've seen him do the weather in Mason City, in Cedar Rapids, in the Quad Cities. Now, Ryan Burchett, former television meteorologist extraordinaire, is going to do the weather right here on Great Day. Ryan, take it away. Well, it's been five years, so I'm a little rusty, uh, to <laughs> say the least. But uh, 33 degrees this morning in Des Moines. It's a nice, I, I got up at about five in the morning drive over here, and so it was a nice, pleasant drive. And not so bad uh, looking for uh, some sunshine today. Temperatures out there, uh, upper 20s in Indianola, uh, 32 in Ames. Uh, so a nice start to the day. I shouldn't have any problems heading out the door. As we uh, look at the radar, possibly a few snowflakes flying around out there. Most of this not making it to the ground. There's a little boundary sliding through right now on the radar. But other than that, uh, looks like uh, we'll have a nice warm day again today. Upper 40s. I've so we'll seen a few snowflakes this morning and get that sunshine out there. Uh, otherwise, uh, on down the road, we have some good news in the forecast uh, looking at uh, a warm up uh, by the time we make the weekend. Uh, upper 20s tonight as uh, we start stair stepping up and uh, into tomorrow. We'll have a little bit of a north breeze keeping temperatures uh, down into the low 40s, uh, but some sunshine out there. And uh, let's look down the road at the next seven days. I think that uh, we have a uh, whiskey warning for the weekend. <laughs> uh, we might need to get out there. Actually, that would probably be if it was cold, right? Uh, looking like uh, some gusty winds blowing in some cool air Wednesday into Thursday, but then by the weekend we get the sunshine back, 60 degrees, and uh, well, well, maybe margaritas, I don't know, uh, vodka tonics, gin Sounds tonic. Sounds good to me. Gin tonic season, there you go, that's okay. coming back. And you know who makes some of that stuff is the Mississippi River Distilling Company. The shameless plug, I love it. I'm happy to do it, and <laughs> thanks for bringing some of your product this morning and for uh, doing weather. Looks good with your suit. It really does. It matches very well. Lou and Jackie, I'm going home now.